Now, uh, on the subject of this, before we got news of the ceasefire, um, an individual named Deborah Messing, and she really puts the mess in messing, right, folks? That's the best you get from me in terms of jokes. Um, anyways, she had this thread, and this, I mean, I read it. It almost made my head explode. Please take three minutes and read through this carousel. Uh, there is so much disinformation about Israel being spread and it is getting people hurt now it's ironic that she says this right here because as you're going to see the things that she says here i don't know if she made it up i don't know if she got this information from a particular source either way i mean verifiably false things here and yeah so um leah says that this thread was so frustratingly terrible it really is i didn't even know how to respond i, I think that if you saw my my tweet about this i just basically said Holy shit, because how do you even respond to this? This level of misinformation and incorrect things about the entire Arab world and the Arab area, the Middle East and North Africa. I don't I don't even know. Um, <laughs> look, we'll just read it. This honestly is baffling. So there are videos from all over the world, including the United States, of crowds of pro-Palestinian protesters attacking, beating, kicking, using pipes as bombs against jews it's horrifying attacks against jews has increased 483 percent in the last 10 days 86 attacks hamas is a terrorist organization whose sole purpose is to kill every jew and destroy israel most people living in israel want peace so first and foremost let's understand that there is this implication here that anyone who speaks out at the behest of Palestinians, inherently they're anti-Semitic. They're the ones responsible for all of these hate crimes. Now, is it the case that hate crimes against Jewish people has been up? Absolutely. And the left speaks out against that. But what she's trying to do here is tie the activism and advocacy for Palestine directly to this. So she's uh, attributing culpability to Palestinian activists here which is the first thing that rubbed me the uh, the wrong way. She makes it seem as if people who support Palestine and are against apartheid endorse this and support this. That's absolutely not the case. I unequivocally condemn any and all violence and anti-Semitism. But you see, what people like this do is they disingenuously link anti-Semitism to criticisms of the Israeli government. And that's such a, it's such a brazenly disingenuous tactic to shut down criticism that's legitimate and valid of a right-wing government. I mean, imagine thinking that it was anti-American to criticize the American government, or it was racist to criticize uh, a majority Muslim country like Saudi Arabia, or a majority uh, black country like Uganda. I mean, imagine, imagine having that logic. It doesn't make sense, right? Of course you can criticize the policies of a country. So for her to say this, it's it's disingenuous to say the least. So what she says here is, three, I pray for a, uh, for a two-state solution. I pray for the killing to stop. First of all, a two-state solution. I mean, is, is this even, does anyone actually think this is feasible at this point? Nobody's talking about a one-state solution. People have to start actually taking into account whether or not a one-state solution with equal rights to Palestinians is something that is a... Uh, Worth looking into more. I mean, I mean, anyone who says, oh, I support a two-state solution, that's their way of saying, look, I don't hate Palestinians. I support a two-state solution. But this is, this is a lazy, this is a lazy take here. And part of the reason why she says this isn't just so she has some plausible deniability, so she doesn't completely hate Palestinians or not care about them, but also because she really wants there to be an ethno state with Netanyahu at the head of it. So, but that is impossible as long as Hamas is allowed to continue its campaign to destroy Israel. Hamas must be defeated for the safety of everyone in the region, for the safety of Jews every, everywhere. So, um, again, there's an underlying assumption here. Um, all of this could end if Hamas stopped. They're the ones who are the aggressors here. First of all, um, I don't think she knows about this inconvenient fact that Hamas was emboldened by Israel. Second of all, Hamas isn't the occupier here. You can condemn what Hamas does and say that the rockets that they fire, they absolutely lead to Palestinians getting killed because Israel always uses that as a justification to bomb Gaza. But who's the occupier in this instance? Yeah, Hamas asked for a ceasefire uh, since last week, as Tara pointed out, and they didn't get that because 
it comes down to what Israel wants. Okay, moving on to point number four. It hasn't gotten crazy yet. I know that you're you're thinking this is just standard pro-Israel rhetoric and anti-Palestinian uh, shit that we always see. No, no, no. It's going to get worse. Get informed. That is very ironic coming from her. Share it widely. Disinformation is gas on the fire of anti-Semitism, and it is everyone's responsibility not to amplify disinformation on social media. It hurts. If you are an ally, please act like an ally. We need you. Oh, my God. So <laughs> we're going to get to the disinformation that she is... Uh, is sharing because she is going to share these images here i don't know if she made these images herself i don't know if she got them from a particular website let's just read them because holy shit these are these are fucking wild they are wild i read online that israelis are ethnically cleansing palestinians okay so that's myth number one that she's trying to debunk stop taking everything you read online for face value Okay. Palestinians face many challenges and inequalities, but are not being ethnically cleansed. To say that this is an understatement, it's an understatement. <laughs> um, to minimize everything that's going on and reduce it down to, oh, well, they face many challenges. This is literally ethnic cleanse cleansing apologia. That's what she's doing. She's minimizing ethnic cleansing. And I don't know if she is dumb or disingenuous or a combination of both. Either way, it's a distinction without a difference. And I actually agree with, agree with the premise that misinformation is a problem. But she's one of the individuals who's spreading it. However, Jews have been ethnically cleansed from the rest of the Middle East. Okay, so she's shifting victimization here. Actually, contrary to popular belief, it isn't the Palestinians. It's really the Jewish people here who are uh, victims. Now, nobody on the left would deny victimization of Jewish people. Um, Jews have, suf have suffered great atrocities. But what she's very clearly uh, trying to do is change the entire conversation. This one is by far the uh, most weird and bizarre comic, if we want to call it a comic. Um, but I heard that Israel is an empire that colonized Arab land. Look at this response here. Empires require a motherland. A place where the empire seeds the goods they steal and where they bring the culture and language to oppress their colonial subject like Britain and America or South Africa and British plus Dutch. Israel is only 0.03% of the Middle East and the only Jewish state in the world. There are 57 Arab and Muslim countries in the Middle East that are part of the Arab empire. Folks. Okay. Let's let's look at the entire Middle East and North Africa region, the MENA region. Ask yourself, where did she get this number from? Because the last I checked, there's like 22. Where did she get 57? Think of the logic here. Because there's so many Arab and Muslim countries in one area, that makes them an empire. A bunch of countries with their own sovereign govern governments and territories that actually constitutes an empire. I mean, this is the dumbest shit I've seen a liberal say in a very, very long time. Yeah, Thorvin, that's a good point. Is she including all of Africa here? Because I don't, I don't know where she's getting this number from. There are not 57 Arab and Muslim countries in the Middle East and North Africa. I don't believe that Israel isn't a colonial empire. I've read so much about it from Instagram. I mean, think of how condescending this is. As if all of the people who are concerned with Palestinian human rights, they just get their news from Instagram or Facebook. We're basically like conservative boomers. We uh, see these memes online and that's how we educate ourselves. It's not like there's a robust history of literature and news and videos that we can watch with our eyes of Palestinians getting bombed. I mean, as uh, Benjamin Dixon was interviewing 
a woman from Gaza, you can hear a rocket going off around her. I'm in my house and I'm ready to be bombed at any second, like literally any second. And the house. that staying in our house makes it any less risky. Yeah, bombings are happening. Like we really don't know where they're going. Like it's all indiscriminate. They can like hit our house any, any, any second. I love how there's this implication that we're uninformed because we get our news from Instagram, which is not true. When she's the one who's saying there are 57 Arab countries in the Middle East. What? So I don't know how much more of this idiocy I can take because almost all of this is wrong. And honestly, like if you were to report this for misinformation, I don't necessarily think you would be unreasonable because there are things in here that are just factually incorrect. Why do so, pe uh, why do so many people spread these lies online then? See, you just educated me with all of this bogus information. So why do people believe the correct information that's being spread around online? Well, because people like you know nothing about the conflict and resort to infographics. What is this, Deborah? Is this not like an infographic type of thing? You're sharing like a comic where there's this weird conversation going on. Like, I want to know, did she make this? Did she get this from somewhere? Like, she probably got this from Instagram herself. Uh, because people like you know nothing about the conflict and resort to infographics on Instagram. Who's getting their information from Instagram, Deborah? What the fuck? This is so bizarre. Jesus. And I love how, like, she she convinced this person at this point, right? If we're believing that this is, like, a narrative here, this person convinced this person with the bogus information, uh, successfully converted them, but this person is still being an asshole because people like you are fucking stupid and you only resort to infographics that you see on Instagram. Holy shit, Deborah, what the fuck? You are a stupid person, Jesus Christ. Uh, don't take my word for it. Research for yourself. Are you sure about that, Deborah? Are you sure you want people to actually research this topic? Because that's why so many people understand what's happening. So how do we free Palestine, according to Deborah Messing? Well, the majority of Israelis support a Palestinian state beside Israel in the West Bank and Gaza. You should support it too. Oh, it's that simple. It's that, it's that simple. Do the Palestinians know, everyone? Do the Palestinians know that it's that simple? Extreme nationalists on both sides try to claim Palestinians plus Israelis don't deserve national rights. If you see someone opposing the basic human rights of either side or saying they don't exist, stay away. Again, so we should stay away from uh, Deborah Messing. But I love this. This very, very um, large question for someone who likes to uh, talk about how complex the issue is like Deborah Messing. She doesn't give you a definitive answer because she knows what the definitive answer is. We have to put pressure on Israel. How do we put pressure on Israel? First and foremost, the U.S. government has to stop vetoing every single resolution condemning Israeli apartheid and their war crimes at the U.N. Security Council. Second of all, boycott, divestments, and sanction. You know, it's not that far in history that you have to look back to see what was effective in South Africa, in South Africa during apartheid. So I love how... You know, she, she gives you a little bit of th uh, something to think about. So what do we do to uh, free Palestine? Oh, we'll just support a two-state solution. Boom. That easy. Folks, she's got to get this information to the Palestinians because I don't think they realize how easy it is to end the occupation that they're currently um, dealing with. So I think she says one last dumb thing. No, that's it. That's it. Uh, and I love the responses here. So uh, Desiree... <laughs> You are entirely ill-informed. Remarkable. The irony here is that this thread, this very thread is spreading misinformation. Great job in that regard. I've got to like these. These are great. Everything you've said in this thread is disinformation. <laughs> like, I mean, if it weren't for these people calling her out, this would make me feel crazy because she's so, she's so disingenuous and so confident. Like, this is the Dunning-Kruger effect right here. She thinks that everyone else is wrong and everyone else is getting their information from Instagram infographics and memes when she doesn't even have basic facts about the world that are easily verifiable. How long does it take to Google how many states are in the Arab world? But she put 57. She shared an image that said there are 57 states within the Arab world. And not only that, all of these states collectively account for an Arab empire. Like, what is wrong with Deborah Messing? Out of all the liberals, she's the most uninformed and insufferable. Like, I'm calling it right now. Holy fucking shit. Deborah Messing, 
literally got this all from Instagram herself. She took this information from Instagram herself and she changed it to make the information incorrect. I don't know if she did that herself or if somebody else did that and she just shared what somebody else did, but she took good graphics and changed it. So aren't Israelis and Palestinians just fighting over religion? They are not fighting. Israel Israelis are the oppressors and Palestinians are the oppressed. And the situation is about anything but religion. She is truly shameless. You know... You... You... You know... You know the... You know the thing... thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.